If you've ever been searching for plastics for your ATV or dirt bike, they're really not cheap. Well, with the exception of a dirt bike, but on a four-wheeler, they can cost up to $1,000. Now, if you're going custom plastics, it could be even more than that. And new plastics is one of those things that not all of us can afford. It was a long time until I ever had my hands on a full set of brand new plastics. So when I was first looking for them, I was really apprehensive about buying them. And the first set that I got, I actually wasn't that thrilled with. So the purpose of this video is to show you a number of aftermarket fenders, specifically for the Yamaha Banshee, but I think this will apply for other makes and models as well. I want to show you the fit and finish of these products in my experience and what you can expect to pay for them in the current market. Now I've got this stripped down Banshee frame that we're going to use for fitment. This is for the Voodoo Banshee if you've been following that series. This is an OEM frame that has no modifications in regards to mounting points. Now I do have a set of custom heel guards that I fabricated myself. They are lined up perfectly for the Meyer fenders which had a very nice OEM fit. So we're going to go ahead and install those and then get to testing these plastics out. Now the reason we're putting these heel guards in place is because on the OEM heel guard, there are factory mounting points on them. Plastics we'll be testing today are OEM Yamaha, Meyer, UFO, and eBay or Amazon plastics. Categories I'll be scoring them on are appearance and shine, fitment, warning labels, packing, and price. There will also be a bonus section at the end of this video where we weigh the plastics to see how they compare. Grab your popcorn and hold on to your butts because it's about to be a showdown, plastic style. Now you may have noticed these two giant packages behind me in my intro. Those are brand new plastics straight from Yamaha. These are factory OEM. They came in these two big boxes. I've got some tank guards inside as well. They came in all separate boxes, but the reason that I waited is because I wanted to show you how, the, how these came. They came quite a bit nicer Nice, more nicely packaged than some of the other plastics that I've received. Now the Yamaha Banshee is a pretty popular model when it comes to sport ATVs and the aftermarket is really good for it. So there's actually a number of companies that offer aftermarket plastics for them. Other, other ATVs, not so much. Now the fenders that I have to test out today are these OEM fenders. I've got Meyer fenders. I've got a front set of UFO fenders. And I've also got a set of eBay or Amazon fenders. I don't have much hope for those. Some other aftermarket companies you may hear for the Banshee are Lakers, Full bore and Vitos. All right, let's get to opening these up. Th this is stuffed with these air packets to make sure that these things are nice and insulated. They're bagged, and it looks like there is a protective layer of cardboard around these plastics as well. And it actually feels like they're heavier. I'm not really sure though. It's tough to tell just holding on to them. It feels like they're heavier than the eBay plastics that I just got done opening in my last video. This is my first ever set of brand new OEM plastics. Check out all this packing material in here, man. Both boxes. Geez, I have enough to start my own shipping company. In this box right here is where the eBay slash China slash Amazon plastics are. And you can see the one box is smaller than both of the boxes from Yamaha to fit the front and rear fenders. And this is how it showed up. That's not necessarily a fault of the company, but just, just one of those things, man. Now I did repackage these. I've already had these out and I tested them and everything. However, this is exactly how they came. They're, I didn't really change anything. The tank guards and the radiator cover will come in a separate box and they come bagged. And then the front and rear fenders, they actually do a good job of fitting these things in there. And it seems like they're not stuffed. However, I'm not sure that's the case. We'll talk about that in a minute. This is how they come. You can see no packing material whatsoever. They just come in these bags kind of floating around in the box like so. So we'll pull that off in a moment and I'll show you guys a clip of when I got these Meyer fenders because I did do an unboxing video. And here they are laid out you can see they have this protective, it's uh, almost like a, uh, it's not a tissue paper. I think it's a little thicker than that, but that's gonna be protective. And then it looks like they have tissue paper underneath actually. We'll see when we unpack that. And there it is, man, the Yamaha Genuine. 
pretty satisfying, man. Then I've got the Myers laid out here. The tank cover and radiator guard are OEM on that one. But the front and rear fenders are both Meyer. I purchased those brand new uh, maybe four years ago, five years ago. And this is a UFO fender right here. This is the tissue paper kind of deal that came off of the OEM plastics. You can see they were taped in the corners and actually form fitting. These were on the rear fenders. And this is actually, dare I say, heavy duty. No, but that's definitely gonna help with some impacts if the box gets dropped or anything. Packing, hands down, OEM Yamaha takes the cake. All right, now I've got all these plastics laid out and this is definitely one of those things that you have to feel it to believe it. Just holding these fenders, these are the uh, aftermarket, and then holding these fenders, the OEM, you can actually feel the difference in quality. These look really good just sitting there. When I first got these, I thought it was a winner. I really did. I'm gonna show you guys some of the issues that we're gonna run into with those things. But now, after putting my hands on the OEM, I, it actually feels like they're heavier and just, it, they just feel like better quality, they really do. And then there's a number of little things I noticed and I'll go over those, which just right off the bat, you can, you can feel the quality difference. All right, let's go ahead and mount these things up and get an idea for fitment. I think it only makes sense to start with the OEM because that'll be a nice baseline. Before we start to compare these plastics, I think it's important to note that when buying any aftermarket parts, it's typical that fitment is not perfect. In many cases, small modifications are needed for perfect fitment. Designing aftermarket products is a difficult process and many of the companies that do it are smaller and don't have the budget that giant corporations such as Yamaha and other manufacturers have. However, if a company is making a product that has significantly bad quality, or if they have customer service that is considerably bad, I'm going to let you know. Other things to note are that I'm filming this video in February of 2022, and it's possible that the manufacturers have fixed the issues that I encounter in this video, and also that these are my personal experiences, and while I do deal with a lot of aftermarket parts and companies, it is possible that your experience could be significantly better or worse than mine. With that being said, it's never my intent to tear down any of these companies, but to give you my experiences so that you can make your own decision on which products to purchase and to give you an idea of what to expect when you receive yours in the mail. Good rule of thumb when you're installing plastics is not to tighten anything down until after all of your bolts are in place. And that's usually the best way to get fitment. Well, no surprise there. The OEM has nearly perfect fitment. The fit and finish is prime. I would say it's not gonna get any better than this. I also just noticed that there's a very slight metal flake in these plastics. I don't know if the camera is gonna pick it up, but they're not completely black. You can see it right there, I think. It's just a little bit of a sparkle. The front and the back are the same though. I got lucky, because I had to mix match different years to get all black plastics. So luckily that worked out. The tank is a complete black. Here you can see it with that sun. And then you can see on the front fender that has that sparkle in it. That looks fine though. Looks pretty good to me, man. Uh, everywhere, I didn't even need to put this upper tank mount right there. I didn't even need to do that because everything just kind of fits into place and sits nicely. That's a good sign. Like sometimes, you know, you have to like uh, kind of hold plastics in place and then bolt them up to get them to stay. These ones didn't really need anything at all. The worst of it was probably down here that just needed to be pulled just a little bit, but I wouldn't say stretched, nothing that made it seem uncomfortable. The other thing is this one hole right here does not match up. And I believe that's my fault. Uh, again, I made these uh, and I didn't use OEM fenders to make these. I used the Meyer, fe the Meyer fenders or Meyer and that I guess they put the hole in a different spot. So I'll have to fix that mount tab right there, but I'll keep that in mind for the other plastics as well. That's why I wanted to do the OEM ones first because that makes a good baseline. I also wanted to note on the grill how nice the finish is. All of these blades are really uniform and they just look really clean. There's also, when you pull this off, there's catches on the bottom that fit right into the mold of the plastics. And the reason I'm pointing that out is because on the aftermarket set, they don't have them. Now as for the warning labels on the OEM plastics, I always thought that these up here were raised sections that were actually molded into the plastic so you wouldn't be able to get rid of them. But these are actually little placards. And if you drill out these rivets, the whole placard comes off and you have smooth plastic underneath. So these are gonna be actually really nice. The only thing you'll have to contend with is the little holes behind each of these tabs. Now, if you've got graphics, you don't even have to worry about that because the graphics are gonna go right over top of that. and You'll never know those holes were even there. On the back, there's no placard at all. 
It's just a piece of, I believe this is an aluminum plate with the warning label that's just riveted on there and you can't see anything on the backside. This, I don't know if that was an imperfection from the factory and they, they sanded it down or something, but there's no imprint or anything that you can see on the other side other than those rivets and the holes. And then you have one more back here that is riveted in place. And again, there's nothing on the backside. The one in the back wouldn't matter so much because you're never really gonna see that underside. But I just wanted to show that in case you're looking to buy these. And they do have the little pocket here for your tool chest. That's actually a really nice thing to have. All right, next up, I'll try the Meyer. These are the plastics that came off. So I already know how these fit. Now the Myers have nearly perfect fitment, very, very close. There's a couple holes that you may need to elongate or just have to kind of massage the plastics a little bit, but it's definitely acceptable. The places where I noticed it were up here. You can see how far back that bolt is. It really, if they were moved back just slightly, they'd be perfect. But otherwise, they're, they're pretty much good to go. And again, these are OEM fenders. These are from 1990. These are the original 1990 tank fenders, and they fit up to the Myers perfectly. Unfortunately, I don't have a Meyer tank cover or radiator guard to use as a comparison, but these do match up perfectly. Uh, if you were to bolt that top one up, you can see the seams look really good. One thing I did notice with the Myers is that you can see these edges here. They're kind of rounded and like bubbly looking, whereas on the OEM and the other sets, they're much more square and precise looking. It's a very minute detail that's probably not going to bother anyone. These are also more reinforced up in these little arm areas that reach out to the fender. You can see these kind of rib things. And I believe that is a reinforcement area and gives these a little bit more strength. They matched up really nice down here and they also matched up, oh, I forgot a bolt here, but you can see it lines up perfectly with that back fender bolt. And over here, you can see this doesn't match up here either. I must've made a bad calculation with this one tab here. So that's just something to note for the rest of the fitment. But otherwise, I would say these are a great aftermarket plastic. And I can vouch for the durability on these as well as I've had them for about five years. They've sat outside, they've been in the sun. Uh, they've been rolled too. I don't know that they took that much damage, but I did notice with Meyer fenders that that stress mark that you get in a lot of Yamaha plastics, you can kind of see it happening here on these. It's like a, it really happens with the blue plastics from Yamaha. There you can kind of see it. These Myers don't seem to get that quite as bad as the OEM plastics. Something else to note is that you're not gonna get the tool pocket area. There's just this little pocket right here, but there's no clipping door that shuts over top. Now, as far as the warning labels go, I've already removed them from this, but if you get Meyer fenders, you're gonna get regular vinyl decals that go in the normal spots. You'll get them here, you'll get one back here, and they're usually kind of crooked and everything. I think because they know people are gonna rip them off in five seconds anyway. So I would say as far as warning labels go, Meyer takes the cake because when you take them off, there is no evidence of them ever being there. The next set of plastics we'll be testing are made by UFO. Now, from what I can understand, UFO no longer makes plastics for the Banshee. It looks like currently they're exclusively making plastics for dirt bikes. For this trial, we'll be using the OEM tank covers and radiator guard, as I don't think these were ever offered by UFO. I still thought it would be cool to include them in this comparison in case you come across a set that's used. And it also speaks volumes about the quality and the overall fitment of the company in general. That looks pretty freaking trick with the black tank cover and the blue plastics. So the fitment of the UFO rivals that of OEM. I can speak for the front entirely because these were full fenders when I got them and I did mount them up. Not one of these holes needed to be stretched. When you sit these plastics on there, they line up actually better than the OEM set that I have. Didn't need any movement or stretching, move, you know, pulling the plastics out at all. They all line up really, really nice. I, I very much like these UFO plastics and unfortunately I don't have a rear set to compare or the tank cover. I don't know that they ever made a tank cover, but I know they made a rear set of plastics. I would bet that the quality is exactly the same. Now for the warning label, I'll show you some of my previous clips when I had the full fenders. Unfortunately, they do have a border around the warning labels. And on the back side, you can't, it can't be seen. It's nice and smooth. I guess the only way that you could really completely remove those would be to sand down the border and then polish the plastics, which would be a major pain in the ass. And unless you're really good at that, you would probably still be able to tell they were there. Or you could sand them down and put graphics over top and you'd never, get to, you'd never have to see them again. So while they were subtle, that is definitely a con of the UFO plastics. And now for the one you've all been waiting for, it's the eBay Amazon plastics. I believe no matter where you buy these things, they come from the same factory. I don't know if that's 100% true, but that, is, would, that would be my best guess. 
They're the same price on eBay and Amazon. A full set is, will run you around 580 bucks. It comes with the tank cover and everything. And then after taxes and everything, it'll be a little over $600. And we're running out of daylight here and the temperature's dropping, so we may have to move this inside. See if we can get these mounted up first. All right, now right off the bat, I'm already having to stretch these pretty hard. I don't even know if I can get these to fit into these mounting holes. If I, if I get the threads going, you could probably force that, but that's not too good. Let's see if this one's the same. I mean, it's really, it's like not even close. Yeah, unfortunately, if you start it real far away on an angle, sometimes you can get it to stretch its way in. But that's not exactly proper fitment. I did get it to go in there. The bolt's on like a real sharp angle. But it at least is in the hole. That's what she said. Now I'm gonna stretch these really far. <laughs> These, um, that's, I'm putting a considerable amount of force on these just to get that to there. That's definitely not good. <laughs> like, <laughs> more than I would like. But if we can force it into place, maybe if you let these sit out in the sun or hit it with a heat gun or something, they could be okay. It's a good bit of force on there and they're kind of like twisted looking. Like you can see they should be here, but they're, they're not. If you see what I mean, they're like twisted down and out. And I think it's pulling this side too. We can probably make them fit, but you can see, yeah, this whole thing is like, I think when I pulled that side, it pulled the whole damn thing. I don't even know if we're gonna be able to get this one started without damaging it. This is pretty bad. We're almost there, we're about an inch away. We're in the hole. It's not like horrible, but you can see <laughs> something just doesn't look right. All right, let's get our tank cover in place. Out of all the pieces on these aftermarket fenders, I would say these appear to be the nicest. But already, like this, you can tell I'm gonna have to stretch that into place. You can see, like, none of this stuff wants to, everything needs to be forced. Can we make it fit? I just don't know. What I don't like about this is they're putting all of this stress on the plastics to make them line up. That may cause them to get stress marks or crack because of all the tension. I don't even know if I'm gonna get this one to line up. Oh, we got it. It just like suddenly got really cold. This one, these don't sit nicely, so I have to put these bolts in the top to get them to stay. And before I put this on, I wanted to show you guys there's no stays on the back of these, like the OEM fenders to hold them in the plastics. What's weird is that it looks like they had them in the mold and they snapped them off. Not sure why. Maybe whoever pulls these out of the mold thinks that that's one of the little snap off things from the injection mold. Don't know. None of this stuff wants to go into place easy. All is, this is all being forced. This is, this sucks, dude. This isn't even close. No matter what I do, if I can pop this one side in, then the other side pops out. And it's not even up top, it doesn't line up. Now this side is, isn't in over here. This is, this is junk, dude. Let's see how the back fenders fit. Already, this stuff isn't lining up. I can't even, I'm just gonna show you guys. I'm not even gonna try to mount these. So you can see how those sit. They're not even close. 
in the back, they kind of have to be in this area because under here, there's these little stays and you have holes in the frame. So they have to, they have to go into those stays. So that's locked in back there. And then you can see up here, not even close. Here, um, it looks like they're bent forward. And these aren't even close. This is the side that matched up with the Meyer and the OEM, no problem. I mean, they're all, they don't want to fit in there. Like you got to press back. And even then, I mean, I'm sure we could get these maybe to line up if you really stretched and pulled, but they're not close at all. Same thing up here with this one. That's pretty bad, man. They do have the tool area just like OEM. <laughs> I guess that's a positive, right? You can see the way these front fenders sit. Like there's just something that's not right about them. They look twisted up. See like the outside kind of curves down. The Banshee's got nice square fenders. Just nothing really sits quite right. You can see there, it's like pulling out and down to the side, pretty bad. So these may have like a really nice glossy finish. The, the finish on the plastic is definitely good. So on the bench, they look great, man. But fitment is like a two out of 10, man. Whew, pretty bad. And then as far as warning labels, these aren't terrible, but they have the stickers on there. But what really sucks is if you see around the edges, there's a depression in the plastic and you can see it on the backside too. I really don't like that. And the worst part is, because it's a depression, unlike the UFO, you wouldn't be able to sand that down. You'd have to like fill that with a Bondo and then sand it down. If you wanted that to be perfectly smooth to put fenders or um, graphics over top of, same thing on the back. There's a depression and it's getting kind of dark out. Well, the backside, you can barely see it. That's pretty smooth. And then there's this one up here. Same thing, there's a depression. Underside, it's smooth, but just something to be aware of. So uh, overall, man, the aftermarket uh, eBay, Amazon plastics, thumbs down, man. <laughs> that was that was kind of brutal. I've got the scoreboard right here. If you placed a bet on the eBay, Amazon plastics, you might want to leave the building right now. It's about to get pretty ugly. So we'll start off with the OEM for appearance. Got a 10 out of 10. They're just great looking plastics, man. I can't, just can't argue with that. For fitment, gave them, again, 10 out of 10. It's to be expected with OEM. For the warning labels, I gave them an eight out of 10. If you could remove those warning labels and not have the holes left behind, they'd be a 10 out of 10. But because you have to drill those out and you have those holes, it's it's gotta be an eight out of 10. For packaging, again, 10 out of 10, man. They come with all of those packing bubbles and they're wrapped nicely. So if they get kicked around or anything, you're pretty much guaranteed they're gonna come and they're gonna be in good shape. And then for price, same thing, man, 10 out of 10. They're 650 bucks, brand new. You can get them from Rocky Mountain ATV in the OEM section, shipped to your door after tax. $650. All the prices are going to be after taxes and shipping, at least the ones that I found. Now, there's one thing to keep in mind. If you're ordering OEM plastics, sometimes depending on what year you order, it's going to be a little bit different. That's just how it is. And sometimes they're not available either. So the total for OEM is 48 points. It's pretty strong. Next up is the Meyer plastics. For appearance and shine, I gave them a 9 out of 10. It would have been a 10 out of 10. The only thing I don't really like about them is like the little kind of bubbly roundish area specifically in the radiator guard area. And I've noticed on other models as well that they're just kind of rounded. That's not really a defect, but I'm a big fan of OEM look and they just, they're, it's not quite there. So I would say a solid nine out of 10. Fitment, they get an eight out of 10. And the reason I went with that is because I've been dealing with Meyer for years. I've had Meyer fenders for uh, several makes and models and they're, they're usually pretty good, but they're not perfect. They're usually just slightly off. Like you might have to elongate one of the mounting holes or redrill a hole or something, but they're a solid fit. It's never, they, they don't usually mount up and look weird or anything. They're good, solid plastics, but because they usually don't fit right up perfectly, I felt that an eight out of 10 was fair. For the warning labels, they get a 10 out of 10, dude. I wish that all of these plastics did the same thing as Meyer. You've got that vinyl decal and it peels right off. Doesn't leave behind sticker residue or anything. It's, 
that's definitely 10 out of 10. Solid right there, Meyer. For packaging, I gave him an eight out of 10. There's a little bit of an inconsistency with packaging I've noticed with Meyer, and that could have to do with the supplier that you get it from. I've received Meyer plastics that just come in the bag with almost no buffering. And then I've received ones like the Banshee plastics. They came stuffed with paper and they were very well insulated, I would say comparable to OEM. But because of the inconsistency, I went with an eight out of 10. Price, I went with an eight out of 10 also. I think it's a great product. I think pretty much across the board, I'm, I'm comfortable recommending them. I think most people are gonna be happy with them. But the best price I can find for a full set, that's including the tank covers and radiator cover, after tax and everything, it comes to about 860 bucks. The best price I could, I could find was from ZM Performance. I've ordered from them a number of times. So I don't necessarily think that's a bad price, but if you can get OEM for around $200 cheaper, I would definitely choose the OEM. So the total for Meyer is 43, also pretty strong. Pretty strong. Next up is the UFO. For appearance and shine, give them a 10 out of 10. I think that they are the closest to OEM fit and finish minus the warning labels. But this is just across the board, not including the warning labels. I give them a 10 out of 10. For fitment, again, 10 out of 10. When I got those plastics and they were full fendered, literally they lined up, dropped right in place. I didn't have to like shimmy them or anything. It was like they clipped in the place. It was really good fitment, 10 out of 10. Warning labels, they get a six out of 10. They have that stupid border around the labels. I don't know why they have to do that or why they chose to do that, but for that reason, they get a six out of 10, man. I really don't like that. Packaging, they get a seven out of 10. I only have one experience with them, but when I did get them, it was pretty much just in the box. Uh, the good thing was that it was a big enough box that they weren't squished in there and they were not damaged when I received them. So seven out of 10. For pricing, I gave an eight out of 10. I did find a website that had the prices listed. It says they're available. I don't know that they are. They will be linked in the description below, but I have a feeling if you go to order them, you'll get a message back saying that it's out of stock or something, but they were about the same price as OEM. The total came to about 430 bucks with free shipping, and I didn't find a tank or radiator guard that was available for it. Total for the UFO comes in at 41 points. And now for the eBay slash Amazon plastics. For appearance and shine, I went with a seven. The reason I gave them not like a zero is because, you know, realistically, the shine on them is really good. When I first got those plastics and had them on the bench, I was really excited because they are really shiny and they have nice sharp edges. They look like they would be a great OEM replacement. However, as you guys saw, man, once you mount them up or try to mount them up anyways, they just don't want to fit into position. And there's two things that I noticed. The plastics are very shiny, but you can kind of see the buff marks, which really doesn't bother me. In most cases, stuff like that is going to be covered up by graphics. And the first time you take an ATV or a dirt bike out, it's going to get messed up anyways. But if you're making a show quad or if you do TT racing, or it doesn't really matter. It's a brand new product and it should be perfect out of the box. And aside from the little bit of the buffing marks, just when they sat on the plastics, they were warped. They don't sit right and something just looks off. So seven out of 10, I feel like is kind of being generous there. For fitment, they get a two out of 10. <laughs> I feel like that's pretty explanatory. And the only reason that it wasn't a zero out of 10 is because I do think that if you cut them down, you want drag racing fenders, you can probably make it work and look decent. I don't know what's up with the tank cover. Uh, maybe if you hit that with a heat gun, you'd be able to get it to work. I don't really know, but there's obviously major fitment issues with it. Two out of 10. Warning labels, they get a four out of 10. It's actually worse than UFO in my opinion because they have a depression you just can't get rid of that unless you fill it with Bondo. And then if you went around the other side, there's still a big square. You can still see it. Uh, really bad design. Again, I don't know why they do that. Four out of 10. For packaging, they get a five out of 10. The reason they get the lowest is because the front and back fender is stuffed into one box and they were just bagged. And I think that may have something to do with how they're warped. I think they come off the press and they just stuff them in the box. I don't know how they're doing it or what the deal is, but they could definitely be packaged better, five out of 10. And then for price, I also gave them a five out of 10. And the reason I gave them any points at all is because like I said, I think that you could probably cut these down and make them drag plastics. If you can do that and make them look decent, I guess they're worth around 300 bucks for the full set. So the total for the eBay, Amazon is 23 points. So if you were to ask me what my pick is, hands down, it's gonna be OEM. If I can get it in the color that I want, there's no doubt I'm getting OEM. They're probably the best price. As you guys have seen pretty much in every category, they beat everyone else. The only time that I would go with an aftermarket is if I was looking for a different style, something like a full bore, which isn't in this video. That's almost like a body kit. It's got a different look to it. Or if I couldn't find the color that I was looking for, if you wanna get like a lime green or something like that, you're gonna have to go with aftermarket or like pink. You know, Meyer does make fenders in these 
like odd colors. So if you want it really custom, you're just gonna have to go with the aftermarket. Now, a close second would be Vito's. I didn't include Vito's in this video because I don't have any here, and I actually have no experience with Vito's. However, I did put up an Instagram doing a poll and asking what your guys' experiences are with plastics, and I got a ton of people saying that Vito's are excellent. They said they have very good fit and finish, and they're the most OEM-like aftermarket plastics that they could find. As far as I could see from the pictures, they've got the same style warning labels like OEM, and you can get it in radical colors. I've seen they have it in lime green. So I would say that Vito's will be a close second. The price on the Vito's is a little bit higher than OEM from what I saw, but I would say if I was gonna do another project and I couldn't get the color I wanted in OEM, I would be pretty confident in trying out Vito's. And then my third pick, would be Meyer, but there's a back door to getting a better price and that's getting a blem. So what a blem is, is it's like a second. When it comes off the assembly line, it's got some kind of imperfection. It might have like a scuff mark or like a wrinkle in the plastic or a slight uh, like discoloration in the color or something. And what'll happen is they put them into another category and they sell them as blems. If you go on eBay, you can find Meyer blems pretty much all the time for all makes and models. I've purchased blems before and I've been really happy with them. In most cases, it's something that I probably wouldn't even notice. And like I said, with the finish on these plastics, most times they're gonna get covered up by graphics or after a couple rides out, you're gonna have blemishes in them anyways. From what I could find for the Banshee, you can get a full set of Meyer blems for $622 shipped to your door. That comes with the tank guards and the radiator guard. So that's the score for those. I bet on OEM, so I win this one. Everybody that voted for any of the other contenders, you can just Venmo me or PayPal me all of my winnings. Really appreciate that. Now nah, I'm just kidding. Let's uh, put these things on the scale and see what they weigh. I'm kind of curious. So this could get kind of tricky, but I think I got it beat. So I got the scale of doom under there, right under the frame. We'll turn that on and that should zero out. So right now with the frame on there, it's registering zero. If I push down on here, see the weight goes up. So should zero out again. What I'm gonna do, put the plastics on there and we should get an accurate reading of what they weigh. All right, let's start with the Meyer. We're only gonna do the front and rear plastics. We're not gonna do the tank, tank cover because we don't have a Meyer tank cover. And I wanna start with the Meyer because this is what we're taking off of the Voodoo Banshee. So we'll see if we lose any weight. The front one is 4.18 pounds. Well, this could be a problem. Let's just do this. 9.648. So now you know what plastics weigh. About 10 pounds. Let's just see what it weighs with the tank real quick. 11.724. All right, next, we're gonna go to the OEM. Front is 3.816. It's actually lighter. The other one was like four pounds something. And then the back, 9.028. So we're actually, we lost weight. We're moving in the right direction. <laughs> and I have to take the, uh, those little placards and the warning labels off yet. So I bet you it'll be under nine pounds. And just for fun, we're gonna throw the tank cover on here because this thing weighs almost nothing on the OEM one, 10.294. So we actually lost like a pound and a half in the plastics. And now for the Chinese eBay plastics, 3.5. That's the lightest of any of them yet. I swear these plastics are actually smaller. Like they don't, they look like they've shrunk. 8.1, oh my gosh. That's like considerably lighter. 9.304, wow. So they're using less material, that's for sure. <laughs> All right guys, so now you know what plastics weigh. I think it's actually pretty cool. We lost a little bit of weight going to OEM plastics. I, get the, I guess these Myers, maybe they're a little bit thicker, more heavy duty, but uh, pretty cool if you ask me. Uh, let me know in the comments section below what you guys think. Let me know your experiences with any aftermarket plastic company, even if it's not for the Yamaha Banshee. Uh, I'm curious and other people read those comment sections too. This whole thing is like a review video for people that are you know, looking to buy plastics. It's just gonna help out the community in general. If you're new to the channel, thank you for checking this out. If you wanna see more Banshee content, right now we're building a Yamaha Banshee called the Voodoo Banshee. It's gonna be really sweet. It's a trail banshee. It's gonna be really lightweight and it should be making really good power. It should be a really fun machine. Definitely check that series out. If you enjoyed this video or it helped you out at all, please give it a thumbs up and also consider subscribing. And if you're looking to support my channel even further, there is the option to join. I love all you guys. I'll see you in the next video. Peace out.